think we can really expect anything too different there. Like I said, Rise is probably going to be a permaban. Mission just simply doesn't play it. And I like to think that Rise is really climbing up the ladder of priority picks for that mid lane. So unfortunately, whether they're on red side or blue side, I expect this to be a staple ban for HKA. Makes a lot of sense. And now the ball's back in their court the last time around. We, of course, saw them removing the Syndra, but that was removed on Fnatic's side. So we'll see what Hong Kong Attitude do here. Sejuani is the big champion that's kind of left open. You know, do they ban it here? And is it going to be another Gragas first rotation? Or did they leave it open, try to bait Fnatic into picking or prioritizing an ADC and then get the Sejuani for themselves? It looks like they decided to go a different route and ban out the LeBlanc. So we might see the Sejuani coming in here for Broxa. Of course, a lot of junglers other than Jarvan left up. Zaya, Tristana, Sejuani. All the big champions left up. I expected it would be Sej, and there it is. Yeah, and I think Hong Kong Attitude, no brainer to go ahead and take the Triss now. What are they going to answer with? I think they definitely should pick up their jungler earlier on. Godquai did not look nearly as comfortable when he wasn't on an engaging tank. But they don't technically need to pick it up in this rotation. I'd like to see them grab an aggressive support. I did like the Alistar, especially because with taking the Triss on it, it's probably going to be the Zaya. So pick up the Alistar again. Uh, Unified uh, and Kai Wing looked very confident in the 2v2 across from Reckless and Jezus. All right, That's a left turn. It's going to be uh, Yordle Combat. Lulu down on the bottom side. So let's see how that one goes. Very pokey lane. Mm, I don't know how I feel about this. I prefer uh, Kai Wing on much more playmaking oriented supports. Obviously, it makes sense. An ardent sensor user, uh, the ability to augment a lot of Tristana's attack speed. These uh, champions certainly synergize really well together, but it's about their responsibility in HKA. Uh, you know, who is their big playmaker? Who's going to start the fights for them? And Kai Wing is one of those guys. I'll see where that. Falls to with the change up here in the composition now for Fnatic side to lock in that Zaya as expected. And we are looking at a Karma bottom lane, which you mentioned the last time around in picks and bans. Another Jez's special that likes that poke damage she can provide and the shields. Yeah, and it's really about that pushing potential. When you have the Lulu uh, Tristana, it's already going to be a very heavy pushing lane. Now with Zaya Karma, it gets a bit easier for, for Fnatic to create uh, space or even a, a pressure point that Broxa can play around. You know, if, if they get the push advantage bottom, he can suddenly start invading on that. Or if he doesn't want to invade, he has safety to farm his own jungle because his bot lane will be pushed up protecting him. Yeah, a lot of CC when he comes and brings it now. For Hong Kong Attitude, they lock in the Gragas before the next phase of bans come in. They don't want to expose God quite a, you know, a couple more jungle bans being thrown his way. And now we enter that second phase of bands. And already it's pretty standard compositions. They really haven't shown, you know, too much. I talk about kind of the core of a composition a lot. Um, these are just surrounding, you know, cherry on top, some sprinkles, but it's not really like a, a siege composition or a monster objective burn composition or a big 5v5 composition just yet. It's just kind of the stock standard basics. All right, so what kind of Sunday do you fancy for Hong Kong Attitude? How, does, how should they fill this one out? I actually wanted them to take the Maokai, but they ban it away. I want them to have the hard engaged champion. I'd like to see a traditional 5v5, especially because they picked up, you know, the Lulu Trisana combo. Yeah. Well, but I won't get my way. He also won't have cast in this game since that's banned away from him. Let's see what Hong Kong Attitude ban out. If it's another top laner up again. So as no, instead, it's the Orianna. Trying to deny a lot of wave clear options or more wave clear options from Caps. Trim down that pool a little bit. Still think Caps has more than uh, viable options left to him. Oh yeah, he's got a pretty solid champion pool. We've seen him pull out some really interesting stuff when he doesn't get a lot of the champions he wants. His Aurelian Soul hasn't been touched. Mm -hmm. It's always a possibility. I want to talk about being able to roam down. He doesn't have to be worried uh, worried about being uh, isolated in a lane when he never has to be in lane. If you won't come to me, I will come to you. Well, that is sometimes what Caps likes to do. Now for Hong Kong Attitude, ball's back in the air court to try and Give pick up. He's still looking for the top Jace. lane, looking for the mid. And hallelujah, as you nailed it, it's going to be Jace. Okay, so a mission, he goes from one comfort pick, and then he lands onto the next one. It is going to be his Jace. These are kind of like his two big signature picks. It's also going to put pressure on Caps. You know, what will you match across from that? could also be a karma mid lane. Yeah, that's very possible. You know, that's where the Arden Sensor can be, and maybe we'll see that. And it's going to give him a, a fair amount of safety in the lane, but Fnatic, they lock in. Speaking of safety, locking in the Shen. And now it's back to see what the final pickup will be as caps go towards, or if they do decide to flex that karma. 15 seconds remaining. Eyeball on the Casio. Would make sense with their composition. Again, it, it offers a lot of safety. It's really hard to dive onto the back line. It's hard to catch Zaya anyway with her ultimate. And then when she's standing next to Cassiopeia, it becomes even more impossible. Great beefy front line with the Shen and the Sejuani. So many different options to start fights uh, and, and create distance. So I really like what Fnatic have put together. They've got great bridging points, you know, champions that can peak really early in the mid game and then handing off that baton into the late game. Yeah, and for Hong Kong Attitude, it looks like they're gonna try for a little bit more damage all across the board. Last lock-in is going to be that rumble for Riris. 
And it was really Mission's Jace that kind of gave away that it was going to be Rerus's Rumble. Again, another signature pick for him. Uh, because you have the big 80 threat in the mid lane, it means that Rerus can be freed up to look for the magic damage up into the top lane. So one of the reasons why Mission is such a proficient Jace player is that it opens up the ability for Rerus to play his Rumble. Mm -hmm. So we get ourselves a very comfortable Hong Kong attitude composition. And you know, only one true tank, but that artificial tanking is coming out of the Lulu's wild growth means that you know any one of those carries could definitely get beefed up right on the front line. I think I like this fighting ability from Hong Kong Attitude as well, but they've once again got side lane pressure. And it's again another great bridging composition. You know, the fact that Jace can be that big power in the uh, the early game as well as spiking in the mid lane. Uh, Rumble then takes over as soon as he is like level six, level eleven, and then three points at his ultimate, and then handing it off to Tristana. So there's points at every single portion of these games' compositions or these teams' compositions where they can be powerful, where they can look to make plays, and we shouldn't have another slow farming game as Fnatic were just waiting to ramp up. Yeah, expect to be a little bit more explosive in the early game, in the mid and the late, why not? And for Hong Kong Attitude, they've got a few more tools to work with, not so much one-dimensional. We'll see if Fnatic can take it to them twice in a row, put themselves up 2 and 0 the old kings of Europe, gunning for the group stage of Worlds. Do they get to be the kings of Europe anymore? They're the old kings. I feel like Green. G2 you just like ripped just, that from Just because you're not sitting on the throne anymore doesn't mean you didn't used to. I'll accept yeah. prince, princes, princes of Europe. Europe. Does that mean they're going to be ascendant next year? I don't know. Well, we'll find out. Hong Kong Attitude, of course, another third seed from their region trying to prove that the LMS is not a two-dimensional place. We'll find out if they're able to take it and even things up up against Fnatic. We load up onto the Rift. Same sides once again. And a lot of my attention is going to go to Rerus and his Rumble. Again, it is a comfort pick for him. He's certainly showed big things on this champion, but it's a very different style. You know, this is HK recognizing, okay, the side lane pressure, that, that didn't really go as we planned. Let's focus more on kind of the big 5v5. Let's play around this team fighting ultimate. Um, whereas Soaz now gets to control the tempo in the side lanes. Like, buddy, you are staying here with me or I'm going to beat you there anyway. Pretty much. Well, he's got a pretty quick out if he decides that he wants to get on top of one of his carries. You mentioned that beefy front line that the Shen, the Sejuani can provide. He can get there right quick with the Stand United. We'll see how it all unfolds. Line of scrimmage, no shenanigans this game. I am really feeling the crowd passion behind both these teams. There were a couple of Fnatic jerseys and signs popping up in the crowd, so it's not just the uh, the one-dimensional hometown favorites for, for Team WE in Wuhan. Uh, now the crowd is chanting Jaya. It means uh, refuel or, or fan the flames. It's kind of like saying good luck. So if you want to cheer for your team in Chinese, it'd be Fnatic Jaya. Yeah. And her lessons with Frosker, and I love it. HK, you were supposed to say HK Jaya. You HK Jaya. Messed up. I set it up for you. I mean, I let you down quite a lot, don't I? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see if HK doesn't let you down here. Still, not deciding to go too deep kick things off. Everyone from Fnatic waiting in the wings try to dissuade any early aggression. And it's, like kind we'll of, the leash. it's kind of about where these junglers will strike first. Now, we've mentioned this in game number one. We'll mention it again in game number two. God Kwai is much more the uh, the proactive early game jungler when matched up across from Broxa. Um, that said, you know, he doesn't have the same sort of hard CC to work around in his lanes as he did in game number one. He's going to have to be the guy that provides that. In his jungle proximity, he tends to pay more attention to mission than either of his side lanes. And he certainly has the burst damage to follow up with Jace, you know, having those two forms he can be quite explosive in the early game so i would almost expect god Kwai as one of his options to really look at caps here and try to punish this cassiopeia yeah caps didn't have too much trouble last time around and even without brox once again spending a whole lot of attention anywhere near him see how this one all unfolds but the bottom lane was what got really more explosive in the last game and with the tristana and zaya once again I kind of expect that there might be, maybe not so many all-ins, but a lot of poke damage coming back and forth without Lulu. Yeah, I don't expect that there's going to be all-ins. You know, there's not the Alistar available, but it's probably just going to be the uh, the ebb and flow of pushing away forward. And then it's about what do the junglers do with this different pressure point to pivot around. Yeah, the bottom lane is definitely going to be a little place to look for for the junglers, not just because of the way the lanes are going, but we also have Yet another Infernal, blessed with the Dragon RNG this time around. Was nowhere to be found in Game 1, but Game 2 is going to be another story. I was almost really excited that Broxa was papping towards the extended Jace, but then he took a right turn and took the Scuttle Crab. I was like, wait, Broxa's going to gank mid? It's like it's like there's a magnet mid lane, and he's on the same polarity. Every time he gets close, he gets turned away. Doesn't need to. He just wants to hard farm, get that ultimate on Sejuani. He's just having a good time in his own jungle. And Caps isn't you know, doing too terribly either. Every time he takes a little bit of damage, you can see he backs off just to skosh, hides behind that minion wave, and makes sure that mission can't really follow through on him. Now, Godquai, he's on a mission himself, straight up into this jungle. Not going to find that red, but he might find Broxa. See if we're in for a jungle fight. He doesn't want it. Barrel pops, last cone, and he's out. 
And he's going to feel safe to do this simply because Jace does have a rotation priority right now because he is pushed forward. So he'll get there before Cassiopeia. Uh, but it was a fight over the Krug camp. In the end, though, Roxy gets his full clear and he's got the Krugs to himself. And as I say that, is he going to gank bottom? He just might. Unified Kai Wing a little bit pushed up. There's no ward in that tri brush, so ah. he might go unseen. Yeah, he definitely has the uh, the line in, or he might just assume that the tri brush is warded and might not think it's worth his time and wants to finish Krugs. Well, looks like we got a bit of a battle in the mid, though. Mission, early pressure you were talking about. A little uncertain if he wants to keep on pushing. Caps gave as good as he got. Caps also has the minion wave exactly where he wants it right now. He's super comfortable. Mission going to make uh, his early back, but if Caps holds it there, then he will have to call his jungler over to assist him. To see it happen. Came okay. down back in the bot. Both junglers bottom. They've arrived. Everybody knows about this party, though. Let's see Kai Wing and Unified a little bit low, and they look to jump onto Reckless, looking for that first blood. Nearly have it, and they do. It goes over to Unified, and right now for Fnatic, not too happy with how that's all going to unfold, and Unified hopping right behind God Kwai on the front line. Jezz's leading up the rear as Broxa was able to back away. Hong Kong Attitude come up with one kill. So the other option that was available to the junglers is ganking the overextended bottom lane. You know, both these bottom lanes have the potential to push, but that means that they're going to expose, you know, the, the fleshy underside to the river. And it was Gragas that got there first. Yeah. Superior vision, superior positioning, and they're able to do it. And even in a 2v3, Brox and Jez is trying to make sure that Unified Kai Wing and God Kwai can all push it off for free. And I will note that both their trinkets are down. Um, that said, Fnatic spot lane have fallen prey to this already multiple times at the claim stage. If you go back to their KLG game, they also fell for the very similar game. Now mid. Level five, okay, Caps. He's not quite got nearly enough damage to turn it back around, and Mission does not push his luck on that one. Still, we're starting to see this lane dominance that Hong Kong Attitude are noted for. We saw it in the bottom lane with a little help from the jungler, and we'll see it again. And again, it's Reckless stepping forward, doesn't have the vision. He knows his jungler's there, so that's why he feels confident to posture like that in the lane. But it's God Kwai that comes out of the brush, finds the big damage. The Ignite comes down, denies a lot of the heal, and suddenly it's first blood on Reckless. I love the way the Unified just starts by jumping in. He knows his team is going to be able to back up. He knows he's going to get rooted regardless. But he wants to position himself so he can still dish out those auto attacks. Very aggressive Tristana play, and he gets a well-earned VF sword. Back up towards the top side now, so as is giving Rivers a run for his money, and there's a level six advantage, so if he wants to get involved, it's going to have a little bit of an easier time for it, but that is pretty much equalized right off the bat. Yeah, it's not even just the fact that he has a, a faster route towards the bottom side of the map, which makes those plays that much riskier for HKA, knowing that they'll have to deal with Shin, but it's also a CS advantage uh, that Soas has accrued over this rumble. Yeah, so even though the bottom lane, the mid lane, might be going well for Hong Kong, added to the top is a little bit of a different story right now. And they're going to want that Rumble to be in a good position when he starts ramping up for the fights, but Shen might be just a little more valuable. I mean, the nicest thing about Rumble is that he's still a fairly low Econ champion. Um, it's adjusted a little bit as we've kind of changed him over the course of time, but ultimately, you get points in your levels and you still do a lot of damage. Yeah, and the Equaz is pretty useful all the same, especially when people start bunching up in tight corridors. Yeah, you're not super reliant on finding a massive snowball in your lane to then transfer into your team fighting presence. Naturally, now. Mission, having a hard time getting back to the tower. Misses on that shock blast. Twin Fang is being sunk into him. Fnatic's still controlling a little bit of this river. You saw them place the ward down inside of that infernal pit. And the junglers once again are going to meet each other. God fight. Not there in time to get the smite fight off. Rox is running away, though. It's not just a little bit control over the river. Caps has pretty much entire control of that river. He has, had, he has mission locked down. And God Kwai can really only feel confident as long as his bot lane starts to rotate up to him. Mm -hmm. Still the Hong Kong Attitude dual laners not feeling too bad about pushing up as they know where the jungler is going to be. Playing bottom is still very dangerous. Now they would like to punish Reckless for not having a flash. That said, he will be close to level six and offer him a lot of safety there with uh, his big, what is it, Feather Dance? Feather Storm? Feather Storm, that's yeah. the close one. Close enough. But it's so dangerous to play bottom if you don't know exactly where Soaz is. Yeah, that's definitely the problem, and they're going to be relying on information from Rearus for sure, and even so, you know, not nearly as easy to interrupt that Shen. Now Caps and Mission still dancing it out in the mid lane. Normally you would see a lot of teams actually rotate their bot lane top here, so this is a, a, a lot of confidence in Unified and Kai Wing to really try to punish Jezus and Reckless, but it's not transferring into anything other than a slight CS lead. 
Yeah, that's not a huge thing right now if you're Fnatic because you know you're going to have that bridging composition you talked about. Let's see if they can turn this into some more kills, though. Mission goes in on to Cap, spending out the ultimate from Soaz. Now it's a 2v2 in the mid. Godfly tagging his way forward. Mission a little low on the mana and on the health. Can't do a whole lot, and Godfly's isolated. Equalizer comes in, and this fight just goes one, two, three, four. But it's two kills in favor of Fnatic. Fnatic can make that three a double going Soaz's way. And it's just not recognizing where you actually have play potential in your lanes. It's so dangerous to try to gank anything other than the Shin at this point, which is why I said most of the time when teams see the Shin take over to level six, they'll take their backs, they'll rotate their duo lane up there and try to prevent that ultimate from impacting outside factors. And now Fnatic, they can turn those kills into something even more with four members on the mid lane inside track. Nothing that Hong Kong Attitude can really do is to come back up off the fountain, so it's first tower in the mid top off a couple of kills they just picked up. And normally Fnatic don't get first tower. I believe before this uh, series, HK had a 100% first tower rate through the play-in stage. So suddenly on the back foot, as we take another look at that, and it's a beautiful flash, I believe, from Caps to deny the cast. Yeah, flashes forward, there's no cast there. Uh, Soaz comes in, and now it's Kragus just in no man's land. Not a whole lot they could do, and Caps has been fang in for the last mission. He's completely zoned out of that fight. Hong Kong Attitude thought they maybe had a little more backup than they did. Yep, from bad to worse, the creep wave comes in, there's four members there, and suddenly a mid lane tower is down three ten minutes. Yeah, so not looking great for Hong Kong Attitude, but there is a consolation prize as everyone from Fnatic backed away to spend their hard-earned gold. The Infernal Dragon is up and available, and they pick it up without breaking a sweat. Yeah, really table scraps at that point, however. Now, the next place that HK can try to punish again uh, is Cassiopeia. She doesn't have her flash. She doesn't have her heal. You still have to respect Soaz, because he will have Stan United very quickly. And he's got the TP. But you're pretty much waiting on the cast, which is just about to come up. So I expect it, it should be the play from HKA, just to try to, you know, quick drive by on this cast, especially if it's going to be that far forward. Yeah, mission under the non-existent turret. But Caps understands that he's got a target drawn on him. Oh yeah, that would play safe enough as it were. You get a lot of attention that time around, not just from the jungle, but from everybody. Sorry, Caps is deciding to move up towards the top side and gank the rumble though. Yeah. Long Lunching. way away. Oh no. Right. Oh boy, I think Rarus knows what's up. He has Got a family. Uh, grounded, tries to flash over, see if he can walk it out, but he's stunned and taunted. Rarus just trying to zoom away, but Soaz getting kill number three for himself. Woo, doesn't even drop the equalizer. Unfortunately, there's no vision to catch that. Mission lost control over the mid lane, and Caps makes a very easy rotation. And suddenly, when Fnatic's do put pressure into their mid lane, look at what Caps is able to unlock for them. Oh, yeah. Looking so great right now. Means free push on the tower for Soaz, denying more farm from Rerus as he's coming up in five seconds. Caps all the way back to mid. And they know exactly where Mission is, too. They can ping him out. He's going to be able to dodge away nice and safe. Fnatic pretty much holding everywhere they need to be right now. And Hong Kong Attitude's solid early game. Honestly, nowhere to be found. Look at how confident Caps is. There's nothing Mission can do. He thought about trying to trim that wave, and he's pretty much locked out of his lane. Oh, this is so unfortunate. He's he's having uh, a bad time. Hammer form, knock him back. Now in goes Godquai. Maybe this is where Caps pushes his luck, but I think he's perfectly fine right now. They double down the teleport in. Mission gonna get stopped up by Broxa, who should be able to kill him even through. The cleanse, that was a swag ultimate if I've ever seen one. Ooh, and HKA are starting to crumble here underneath the pressure. Uh, they play a lot of their games from ahead, and you can tell that when they start losing their, their towers this early, they're suddenly confused, you know, where do I need to be? How can I get into the lane? Am I safe enough to push this? And Fnatic are just ripping them apart right now. Yeah, looking to just dive under towers, no response possible. Big minion wave coming in for Reckless and Jezus to take out this last standing outer. Forgive me, there's still one up top, but it's not looking too healthy. It's a stiff breeze from going down. Yeah, well, this one's about to be the same way, and nobody's coming to defend down on the bottom side. Five to one in kills, a 3,000 plus gold lead at 12 minutes for Fnatic. Oh, this has all the makings of a 2-0 if it keeps going this way. That said, it's not over yet. There's still a lot of late game scaling options available in the hands of Unified. Again, if anyone's going to carry HK across the finish line, it would be him. But right now, yes, a very strong start that we don't normally see from Fnatic. And this is what I was talking about. You know, Cap said in the interview that you're going to see the best version of Fnatic. The best version of Fnatic to me is their ability to carry from every single lane. And now it is Cap's turn. Yes, he's pretty much support Cassiopeia, but 100% kill participation right now. Yeah, not looking too shabby. Of course, a lot of those fights have happened in the mid lane, so it's kind of no wonder he's got sitting at the high KP, but all the same, look at this, 1v2, almost 1v3, and so is actually dishing a lot of damage back out onto Unify. That's a big Shen. And he's got reinforcements on the way, as here comes Jezus and Reckless. 
and Broxa. And Mantra Q, Unified. Maybe not as safe as he looks. The shield is going on, and Unify gets the hop over, but instantly Broxa is right there. Gets knocked away the barrel, the heal, staying alive, but Broxa's bringing Shen to the party, hopping behind that tower. Teleports come a flying, but Fnatic pay no mind. They try to get a taunt off, it's not gonna happen, and maybe this is the time to back out. Equalizer's on, but Caps is slithering his way through. That Tristan is backing away, and Caps goes forward, flashing, petrifying gaze, looking for Godfly. Reaver stopped up and stunned, thrown into prison, and down he goes. Kai Wing soon to fall as there's no tower left for backup. The Fnatic gang squad coming through with more kills. And we talk about the strength of Fnatic's team fight, and we don't normally see it this early, at least not so far in their world's run, but they're still showing it here. They're so far ahead of the clock, they've got their initial big itemization out. Rod of Ages on caps, and they feel super confident to step forward, not back. 3-0-5 on this Cassiopeia. Talk about being in the driver's seat. They're going about 100 miles per hour as they start moving forward. Rift Herald on the menu, pretty easy for just Brox and Reckless to take away, and all the vision inside the top of Hong Kong Attitude's jungle, pushing in on the mid. This team just keep on pushing. And looking back at this, you know, Broxa, Okay, let's say Soaz. Soaz is taking his back right now. Pretty much saying, I have the ultimate, we can continue to go forward. Normally teams like this are like, okay, we got what we came for. We chunked out the health bars, we're here for the tower. Nah, -uh. we're here for their lives. They push forward, Soaz comes back into the fight with the Stan United. Cap shows up, locks multiple members onto their tower, and then it's just a, uh, what, fish in a barrel? I was gonna say they took the mop and that was cleanup crew, but you know, your metaphor mileage may vary, Frosco. What, three kills in a tower? Pretty good. Pretty big swing. Oh yeah, so now about 15 minutes we're approaching on the clock. That gold lead, 5.6K up ahead. Caps, Jezzes in the mid, clearing things away. They've got control all over the map. But here's the good news for HKA fans. So the next dragon spawning in 50 seconds, it's a cloud. There's no need to uh, to throw yourselves on the sword for that one. You can let it go. The Baron's not gonna spawn for another five minutes. Uh, you just need to make sure that you guard the Rift Herald and don't you know lose two towers for it. But you do have a lot of time before the next big objective that you have to fight for is to uh, to kind of farm up and find those key items. In the meantime, we might be able to find a pick up. A surprise. Look at how much damage he dishes onto Rear. in a 1v2. Finally, they get the shutdown, but that was so close from ending the rumble. But that is very important that they got the shutdown bonus on the rumble of all things. Now, this is what they need to guard against, however, they may have used too many resources. Yeah, Rift Tail coming in hot, takes down one inner tower, still moving in the mid, and the rest of Hong Kong attitude a little preoccupied up towards the top side. So they might have given up a lot more than they needed to just to try and defend and shut down so as ganking the teleport's always a good idea, but at what cost? It's still gonna be pretty hard for Fnatic to break the base at this point just because it still is so early on in the game. I mean, uh, HK would have to make a, a colossal error where they just died multiple members outside of the base and allowed Fnatic to push in. So again, there's still about four minutes of breathing room before they need to exit their base and start looking towards the Baron. They need to be able to do so with the items as well. You can see Jace just picking up his first completed item. And so how many Yomus at this point? Still gonna be pretty good, but I feel like he might have needed some of that a little earlier. I mean, look across the board. Caps is sitting on Umbrella Namicon. The tier and the Rod of Age is already completed. So they're definitely falling behind their counterparts with all the gold that Fnatic have been lining their pockets with. They are about an item and a half behind every single member in pretty much every single position. Rumble has one of the cheapest builds, and he's like the guy that's kind of on par. Yeah, this Shen's a monster split pusher. Like, normally you see him sitting on the team mat, right, and utilizing the gold he's got, but no, 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 okay. I got the Hydra. These guys are gonna have to come with me. And we already saw how successful he was in the 1v3 at drawing a lot of attention. Yeah, allowing Fnatic to just keep on opening up. So 17 minutes still on the clock. Reckless gonna be sent up to the top to push away the mini wave. Rest of Fnatic gathering inside the mid, going for the jungle, seeing if they can get a pick out onto anybody from Hong Kong Attitude. Have to be careful that you can push into their own jungle at this point. They're just trying to deny any of the leftover gold for HKA, taking everything and the kitchen sink away from them. Uh, they don't need to start creeping their vision into that red side jungle or top red side jungle just quite yet. Again, the Baron hasn't spawned, and the Cloud Drake is just free pickings. I mean, Zyrene likes to talk about how, you know, nothing in League of Legends is free, which I 100% agree, but that Cloud Dragon, I think, was traded for three creeps. I mean, that's a pretty discount Drake. It gives like them a little that. bit of extra move. <laughs> Let's give them some... Serious move speed out of combat to rotate around even faster. Of course, Fnatic always having the edge in this game and Hong Kong Attitude still trying to hang on. There's still definitely a chance for this team. The Arden Sensor's been picked up so that Tristana's damage will be enhanced. Need to see Infinity Edge completed, of course, just sitting on a BF, Pickaxe, and the Zeal at this time. And it's not going to get any worse. Reckless takes Shock Blast, but 
Fnatic might be taking it inside the Hong Kong Attitude Base if this keeps up before too long. Minions here and the rest of Fnatic are following. See if they can take this one down. Cutting through it, the Cassiopeia ult comes through and so it does Broxes. Looks like they might be able to turn him around for now. They've run out of minions. And God, Kwai, that is now three casts that have just completely missed the mark there. So either Caps has him downloaded and it's just beautifully sidestepping that, or God, Kwai is just having a really rough showing on this Gragas. Yeah, well, we didn't see as much out of the Ezreal from the last game either, so questions abound. And now Fnatic running forward. They don't even need as many creeps as they've got here. Just chasing Hong Kong Attitude away to claim that tower 6-0 to zero in this game. Yeah, and knowing that they have the confidence to do so, as soon as that cast was gone, they knew that the big engage tool wasn't going to be there, and they were just going to mow through it. Baron now one minute out. So I said that they had a four-minute breathing window. Well, HKA, I hope you caught your breath. This is the time. Got to start running that marathon if they want to put this one away in their own favor. 19 minutes on that clock. The gold lead still just spiraling out of control with Fnatic claiming all of the inner and outer towers. And the scary thing is, is because it was an ardent sensor rush, they don't have a sight stone, which is fairly common. You know, they don't usually come in around 17 minutes uh, to 20 minutes, especially when you are this far behind. But when you've lost all of your towers, Baron is spawning 40 minutes, and you don't have the ability to place anything other than your trinkets for your control wards, that's going to make it that much more difficult to try to you know, steal away this objective or buy themselves the miracle back into this game. Well, maybe this is the chance for God quite to shine. He hasn't been able to hit the barrels, but if you can hit the smite at the right time, that can start to turn things in your favor. Maybe that's the game plan. You ever want to bring it down to 50-50, but... We have, we have seen Fnatic sometimes stumble at those objective setups. But there's definitely no reason for Fnatic to have this. This should be like the freest objective. And it could be that they feel like they don't even need the Baron to end this game. Uh, well, maybe that's the thing, right? Like if, if you don't, you can't give it up. You can't let a bad engage happen if you never actually go for it. My only concern is, is that still extending, it allows the Gragas that much more opportunity to look for a flank play. The wave clear between Jace and Tristana, I feel like it should put emphasis on them taking the Baron. But sometimes teams don't even want to take the gamble and just feel that their gold lead uh, and it's close to 7k now is enough. Yep. This chase is starting to sting a little bit with those shock blasts. You need to see him hit a couple more. He wants to try and take down any of the Fnatic members. As you mentioned though, still a very tanky front line to try and wear through in the 5v5. Not easy to do unless they can find those flanks. Mission definitely having a little bit of a rough go of things. There's the shock blast missing on the caps. Clearing out the vision game continually. Not Here the side stone, not as much as they can do. This is the, uh, the smothering of vision. Like I said, it shouldn't be a 50-50 Baron Fnatic. Understand, push top, push mid, clear it all the vision, sit in a brush and wait for a pick. Deny yeah. the jungler, deny the 50-50, take the free objective. Completely dark in that jungle for Hong Kong attitude, but Fnatic have got eyes everywhere in that top side. They would know if H2K were coming a mile away. HK, excuse me. Casting the ULCS again. <laughs> and HK are doing the right thing. They're they're you know, flank together. They're making sure that as soon as Gragas has his sweeper up, that's when they move into the jungle. That's when they start to put the vision forward. So they're not wandering out on their own, leaving themselves open to pick potential. They understand that they need to stay grouped up. The problem is, is that they've run out of time. Yeah, here we go. The Baron started. Eyes on it. Doesn't really matter at this point because it's already down to 3,000 health. Brox is just going to hop over. The token smite down. Doesn't even need to do it. Jez is able to secure that one up at the end of it all. And as you said, that was a very easy Baron take. And it just doesn't get more clinical than that. Take notes for solo queue. Push top, push mid, set your triangle vision down, force them back, take the Baron. And rinse and repeat onto the towers now. Is this going to be enough for them to start breaking in to the Hong Kong attitude base? Rivers pushing down with a wave on the bottom. And it seems like the name of the game for them is just going to be try and deny mini waves continuing to push, but with how strong Fnatic what? are, that's not going to be easy. Rivers is not going to risk this one. Keep going! Uh oh. Oh no. I've seen this horror movie before. Oh, he's, he's even gonna flash. Oh dear. There's the flail. Gets the slow. Oh, and it looks like this could be trouble. Reckless makes it look easy with the feathers. Just storms through him. He's got the two items on Zaya. He's got the uh, the crit cloak just for added measure. And they've now just got to pick up the wave. Reckless is going to grab this one, and they're gonna storm mid or excuse me, bot lane. Uh, they might be going to mid pretty soon as well. And with Soaz up on the top, it's starting to close that bear trap all on top of HK. The desperate fight, looking for caps. A few more shots, Unify goes in for the jump, Petrifying Gaze, and he just sticks around a little too late. The barrel comes in after, but the kill's already secured. Now can Hong Kong Attitude turn this one around to the 4 v 4 No, I don't think so, as God Quiet falls. Unified hopping forward, the Feather Storm already landed on him. Still though, losing two just for one. Let's see if the Shen Taunt can land, and there goes 
unified as Reckless picking up the kill, and let's see if this is going to be enough to break the base. Ah, oh, the very edge of the hitbox. It's only Jace that's left, but not feeling comfortable enough to approach the tower and have to deal with multiple fires. Not a whole lot they can do. Those fires are starting to go way too heavy as Equalizer's thrown down. Rare is stopped up under tower right as he was off the fountain. Down he goes once more, and now it's up to Kai Wing and Mission to try and save the day, but their base is already in shambles. Fnatic looking to put this one away quick. And we've now seen two different versions of Fnatic. Hold on, though. Oh, mission. Uh, one last chance to try and get the kills. They're a little low on the health bars, but you can't chase them back before the inhibitor falls. Godfly Kai Wing looking for the chase, not gonna find it. Whenever you hear that ghost blade pop, you're like, how brave are you really? Clearly not enough right now. Mission, uh, he did not accept that one. Definitely understood the circumstance he's in, but as I was saying, we've now seen two different very different versions of Fnatic. We've seen the, the classic, you know, Plains Fnatic, where they fall behind in the early game, they rely on their late game team fight to come back, and now we see this hyper-dominant Fnatic where they just come flying out of the lane phase. Now, they did still leave themselves open to holes. Unify did a great job finding Caps, who was just a little bit too far forward, but the gold difference speaks for itself as the rest of Fnatic collapsed on this fight and just absolutely shredded through HKA. I mean, it was a good start for Hong Kong Attitude, for sure, but just... Just too little, just on the edge, and the fact that there's a massive golden item differential means that, of course, Fnatic, we're going to be able to put that one out. I mean, we're 12 to 3 in kills right now, and one of them was just taking out the Cassiopeia in that same fight. And we've crested over the 11k gold difference. This is going to be a little bit of a rough comeback if Hong Kong had to want any chance of it. The, the greatest cask in the world would have to be placed, and I don't know if it would be enough at that point. They'd have to find both uh, Zaya and Cassiopeia and then instantaneously kill them. Yeah, they need a miracle to fight for sure, but Fnatic marching up towards the base. Looks like that desperate fight is going to be what we're going to get. Mission landing a two-man shock blast, starting to sting a bit, but Reckless and Jezz are able to back out away with the Baron of Power of Minions falling. Going to look for other opportunities. Inhibitor's already down in the top side. Yeah, but trying to, again, put out multiple fires right now. Jace and Tristana are hunkered together. It makes sense because HK, they need to fight as five. They'll just get, you know, split and torn apart if they uh, separate and go into individual matchups. But that means that they're losing their top, losing their mid, and getting chipped away at their bottom. Yeah, they need to be hopping in to get that perfect fight, as you said, just to try and save the day and get Fnatic off their back. But meanwhile, they're already losing out on the inhibitor. Vision goes forward looking for Soaz, but they just don't have enough damage to take down the tank. And they lose their inhibitor as a result. Of it. That's two now for Fnatic, and they position right back to the bottom, finish the work they started. Yeah, and Soaz is going to go ahead and just make sure that that top wave comes in a little bit faster. But like you said, they can just five man stack bottom if they want. They have the stand united, they can run the one core. Looks to be what they're going to do. And HKA, you have run out of time. Glacial Prison, Godfly is going to stay alive for a few seconds longer thanks to the shields they put on top. Of him, but that Baron power play is huge for Fnatic. And with the super minions marching up towards the top, Soaz keeping him in tow means that the rest of Fnatic are going to have free reign down towards this bottom side while desperate measures are taken by Hong Kong Attitude to try and force everything back, sending Rumble up to the top to deal with it. And will they decide to take the last stand or will they allow Fnatic to suffocate them? Well, that's the run in here. Let's see if they wanted to go all the way. Hong Kong Attitude looking to go around the side mission, trying for that flank, but spotted out instantly. Now Soaz is isolated. Is gonna get away. And a lot of respect for Fnatic right now. They didn't have the Sejuani ultimate, so they didn't feel comfortable looking for the all in engage, not having that big CC available to them. So instead, they got what they came for, broke two inhibitors, disengage, steal away the blue buff, and look towards the next Baron. Keep on building that lead. It's so massive right now for Fnatic. Only a big fight would really start to turn things around, so they opt not to give it to HK. Hey. And you know, I say that they look for the next Baron, so as it did use Blast Cone and then placed his Control Ward onto the buff, but again, they can just choose to five stack bot lane and let the super creeps mid and top do the work for them. They don't need to open themselves up into a possible steal. I mean, they've got so much damage to work with, too. This is Zaya. See shredding through the blue buff or the red buff right there on three and a half items. And you've got caps on this Casio that you said, you know, this is where they started to give him some attention. He started to do some serious damage. Well, at this point, he's sitting pretty on four items, and with the Seraph's Embrace finished, he's not going to run out of mana anytime soon either. I mean, how often do you see Caps with higher kill participation than Reckless and Jezus for Fnatic? That's a good point. This has definitely been a different type of Fnatic game. Of course, Caps definitely showing off his mechanical ability. Even if he gave up the Ghost on that one, Solo pushing down towards the bottom side, the rest of Fnatic can come and meet him pretty easily, tagging their way in to clear out the waves. It's going to be very difficult for Hong Kong Attitude to try and stop this tide from overwhelming their base. Now they decided to pull back because they didn't have Broxa's ultimate. They do this time. All right, one more shot on the tower is all it's going to take as Broxa was 
leaping into the front, looking for a stun off or just to defer or deter a Hong Kong attitude from trying to push back. And this would be the last inhibitor to try and take out. The ice bullet doesn't land. Mission still flanking around the side. Fnatic realizing that maybe on the cooldowns they don't want to take this fight. Shock blast landing. Cast goes forward, flashing for the petrifying gaze. Not going to get the stuns off, just the slows. Equalizer comes down. Fnatic huddle into the corner, and they still are able to drag away HKA. Godfly still has flash and cask. Pops away to avoid the taunt. Roxa looking for the slowdown for the chase, but the rest of Fnatic, they've got the inhibitor on, in mind right now. A little bit low on the health bar, so it's getting knocked back into mission. Do they have the damage to finish off the Shen? He gets the taunt off onto Godquai. Looks like Caps is the target. However, he gets the heal and the shield. Can Unify take him out? Looking for the big buster shot, but it's not going to be enough. The cast knocks Reckless away to the side. Featherstorm coming back up at Fnatic. They're looking to close this one out with no more tools left in the tank for Hong Kong Attitude. That's a double kill over for Reckless, cutting through the Nexus turrets, and they will close this one out. Two and zero in this series. One game away from moving forward at Worlds 2017. And what more do HKA have left in the tank? They got their cast and they got their Jace in the Rumble, and Fnatic didn't care either way. They beat them in the mid-late game, they beat them in the early game. Do they have anything left for Game 3, or are they about to go into the night? For Hong Kong Attitude, it's a nightmare scenario. This is the team that stood up and said, we want to be in the top 16 teams in the world. We deserve it. We can prove that the LMS is a very powerful region and not just top heavy. But Fnatic right now? Are shutting them down. Yeah, and fun fact going into this, LMS and EU were 9-9 over the course of every single world in MSI, so this was the best of five to definitively say, you know, EU better than LMS. Mm -hmm. Doesn't quite have the same ring to it as NA, but we may find that one out a little bit later. Fnatic have to be really happy about this right now. We saw, as you said, multiple sides. The If it ain't broke, don't fix it Fnatic early on when they had to come back in game number one, but for game two, Honestly, really impressive when they put those resources into caps. And they really didn't change anything uh, about their draft. It was kind of the same cut or dry, but kind of different ways that they exploited the map. Right. Well, now for Fnatic, they're two games up in the series. And to hear how they pulled that one off, let's send it over to the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Pyra. Fnatic, if we're honest, smash that game. Fnatic were in absolute control. And what changed between game one and game two for this team that, that set this up? Uh, I don't know how much changed on the Fnatic side. A lot <laughs> definitely changed on the HKA side yeah. with that draft. Yeah. Uh, they definitely went for the more early game approach, which I think we are fine with, but they sold the farm while doing it and ended up with a team comp that does not do anything if it falls behind at all. Yeah, the problem they have is, like, I saw them lock in the Jace. We heard Frost talking about how this is a big comfort pick for Mission, how he feels very confident. We already saw his casting earlier on in the day. I'm like, all right, I'll give it a chance. Like, Jace mid, it can work out fine. Then they paired up with the Rumble, and I was turning to Mike and I was like, now look, I might not be an expert, but when I look at this comp, I'm, I'm not really seeing the goals here. It seems a little mix, mix match because they kind of want to run the 1-3-1, one, one, but they also kind of want a team fight. And then we were like, yeah, I don't really see the late game value of this comp. So the only real way they're going to win is if they get some kind of early lead. And they, they didn't make it this time. I think with the Lulu Trist, they're probably hoping to get a little bit more return, but I like that Fnatic kind of attack that potential weakness right away, and rather than going for Janna again and potentially lose the bot lane phase, they take the Karma to combat it right away because they're saying, listen, if they don't beat us in the first 15 minutes of the game, we're going to win. And I have to say, a pretty accurate way for them to attack it. The thing on HKA side is I feel like if they had won that early game, they had an out, and from their end, all they did in the previous game was win the early game, so maybe it could have been the right decision but the issue for me is when it came to execution, if we take it this look, this look at this first replay brought to you by Ace or Predator, you can see what happens when you try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Caps when there's a Shen there to back them up. This is the first attempt that they've made at the mid lane, really. They could have looked a little bit earlier because Mission was doing all right in the laning phase, but now the Shen has all He's able to join in this play and instantly turn them around, and the rest of Fnatic is ready to back them up as well. And it doesn't matter if Broxa doesn't really gank mid very much because you have the Shen. The Shen's there to save him. The rest of the team then gets the follow-up, collapse, and it's just a really good demonstration of Fnatic being very good at reacting to the play and the setup uh, trying to be made from the side of HK. And I think the big concern when we look at this is that H or Fnatic, for at least for HK, Fnatic have not shown the same weaknesses when it comes to closing out. If we look at this game, particularly if we look at our next replay, you can see that once they have a lead, they're not afraid to make these very aggressive plays to punish the enemy. Yeah, so the big thing here from Fnatic was that they had just taken the bot tower, so HK swapped top to try and put some pressure on, but Fnatic read the play in advance, and they said, you know what, we have the Shen, we have the stronger jungler at this point in the game, let's try and force the dive. And at this point, you're thinking, ah, oh, this is looking a little overzealous, this is looking risky, but now we go back to no TP on the Jace. This guy still hasn't 
moved out of the mid lane and Fnatic are just much faster to get the collapse. They sent five members top, they get the outer tower, and at this point, it is just too difficult for HK's composition to really come back in the game. And I think Fnatic really set themselves up for success there. So as once again, uh, playing a quote unquote dog champion to reference <laughs> how he says it, calls it a dog champion, drops it for a week, picks it back up. But the Shen honestly looks like a good pick for him. And I'm starting to wonder what HKA actually has to ban or take away from Fnatic to stop this. Or is this just purely a fumble on their end from the drafting perspective? It does feel a little bit like they don't have a great answer. They play, you know, standard kind of lame bully stuff as well. They can take a Renekton, they can take a Gnar, these kinds of things that will give them pressure versus it. Or Rumble was an attempt at that as well. But at the end of the day, it doesn't feel like Rearus is able to get any sort of advantage for himself. And it basically comes down to mission, God Quai, and Unified to create such a lead that they're going to be able to snowball through this game. Late into this game, Unified still looked like he was playing fairly well, but he just had no front line with this comp to back him up. So maybe you do just stick Rearus on full tank duty. Yeah, and to me, I feel like that I haven't really seen a huge amount from Mission. I kind of expected a little bit more coming into this series, but also Unified, he seems to be making up for that in many ways. He is playing out of his mind. In that final fight, we were all saying, like, there's a potential he might actually win this fight for the side of HK, but the deficit was just too much. But it is great to see that there is a lot of individual talent on this roster. The problem is the team isn't properly playing around their AD carry. It makes me wonder if maybe we're going to bring in the sub-jungler of Gemini maybe later in this series. The other thing as well is that Caps is stepping up a ton in this series. I think he was one of the potential weaknesses that we were all kind of hyping up after seeing him lose some lanes to Null and I struggle. Hype up a weakness? <laughs> uh, I guess we were super excited to watch this. I can't wait to see Caps lose! Uh, no, but I think it is true that we were saying Mission could potentially abuse him and it's, it's going completely the other way. He had a small CS lead in the cast and matchup before Caps uh, kind of made the biggest play of the game. And this time around, just held out even, even had a CS lead versus the Jace, and then continues to make big plays when he's attacked. And we've seen now the Cassio be kind of a power pick for Caps. We, we didn't like it as much until we saw it kind of start to counter some of those Cassid and Shen engages in the previous match until he landed that pick. But this game, he was dominant completely throughout. So now I wonder, is this a pick you have to take away? Do you have to be that worried about the Cassio? And if you do take it away, you're starting to leave open maybe a few other things. Are you leaving yourself vulnerable? I don't know, I think it's a difficult one to call because what we're seeing is that he has a lot of comfort on this champion and it makes me wonder where else does his comfort lie? Because when I think about Caps as a player, historically, some of his best performing champions have been on some of the roaming champions, things like Talia, Aurelian Sol, he's even had a few good Galio performances here and there. And Ryze recently has become one of his more popular picks, but it just makes me wonder where does he now pivot if the Cassio is taken off him and can he have that same level of performance? I, especially if, you know, Fnatic now with side selection again, choose to go back Back to blue side, it does feel like they're fine blinding, uh, you know, Casio or something like that for him. Syndra and, it, and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, the, the, the counter picks well. are not working out. But I have some updates for you. Fnatic have chosen blue side, but maybe more importantly, Gemini, how it has been announced that Gemini is going to be subbing in. And I'm curious how this is actually going to change the way that HKA are going to be playing, because this. That's pretty big, and I don't. I wonder if Fnatic are as prepared for Gemini as they are for Godgua. So from what I've heard about Gemini, is he is just straight up the better jungler. He has better synergy with the team. He's more active in the early game. He seems to have a deeper champion pool. He seems to have a better understanding of how to control vision. I've heard a lot of hype around this jungler, and they've primarily still been using Godgua. So it seems like that now their backs are against the wall. I don't know how much confidence I have in Gemini to suddenly be able to turn around this series, but. There is certainly a lot of expectations on this player. It does feel like a lot of the teams at the playing stage have been starting out with their weaker player and then swapping in the stronger one and being like, ha we were kidding this whole time. One did it with Marf over Brewster, then yeah. you had Nocti, Nocti in the top lane. Yeah. Now potentially Gemini is joining that list. WE did it with zero, so who, who really knows what's going on? And swaps have looked pretty good across the tournament. A more aggressive jungler does feel like a potential way that they can attack Fnatic because while Broxa has been pretty solid this time around, I still, still don't see, still don't feel like we've seen him be hyperactive in the early game. I, I mean, the big thing about Broxa in this game too specifically was that he was just good at reacting to the plays. But even early on, we saw the deficit down in the bottom where he was just a little bit too slow to the play and couldn't quite read God quite. It just heavily went in their favor around the mid and naturally in the top as well. So I think you're right in that Fnatic choose to right now play a fairly passive laning phase and if Gemini is that more active, more snowbally style player, I want to see him invest resources either into mission, let's see how much of a superstar he can be, or put more resources into Unified and be like, this guy's been performing extremely well, let's make him the main carry of our team. Well, it's a difficult road, but I just want to round this out and get predictions for this final game, because while I think this series was slated to be much closer, it looks like it's been very Fnatic dominated. Do you think the Gemini will be enough if they can get this early lead? Can they snowball it out? Because it feels like a hard road for HKA right now. I do not think so. I think 
think it will be the 3-0 for Fnatic. Yep, I think HK is going to eat a bagel here and be able to not pick up any wins. All right, rough road. Well, it's do or die for Hong Kong Attitude. We'll see if they can step it up and stop the sweep from Fnatic. That game is coming up next, so don't go anywhere. Did you forget, ready, boys?